design. It is for peanut butter for GIF specifically, but you can do whatever brand you want. And it is very similar to a jelly themed video that I did a little while ago. And if you missed that one, I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Like I said, if you missed it, definitely go and watch it because peanut butter and jelly go right together. And you can make a cute little combined set if you wanted to use both of them. I hope you love this one as much as I do. The texture of the peanut butter that I made is perfect and I combined a couple products together. So if you're curious on how I did that, definitely stay tuned and watch till the end. And I will see you all next time. Bye. All right, so for this one, we're going to begin with an overlay of a off-white. It's actually more of like a milky white background, just something really soft and smooth. And then after that's done, we're going to file it into shape with our e-file, making sure that the whole nail is exactly the shape you want it. It's got an apex in it, and it's tapered on the free edges and the side walls, and it just blends down nicely. Now, to make our peanut butter jar, we're going to take some clear acrylic, and we're going to be sculpting a cylinder around a plastic straw. And if you're someplace where plastic straws aren't readily available, say you are, um, you know, there's places on the coasts of the United States. I know California is really big on no straws, Florida, et cetera, et cetera. And you might just not be able to easily get your hands on some straws. If that's the case, the other thing you could do is you could take a nail form backing and wrap it around a pen. And then you're going to want to tape it to the pen. So when you're wrapping it around, and I should just make a video showing you this, but if you take um, a pen or anything that's got that syndrical shape, you just wrap the nail form backing around and then you really make sure you tape it down so that it doesn't have a lip on it. And then you're good to go and you can make any of these little shapes too. You actually might have a little more freedom because you'd have the availability to make things in different sizes instead of just the size that you can get a straw for. I personally like to use the straws just because I can reuse them over and over and over again, where you'd have to rewrap the nail form backing each time you went to make a cylinder. But it is an alternative if you are in a no straw environment, which honestly, I think we're all getting there, hopefully in the terms of the environment sooner rather than later. But if you can get a straw in this particular circumstance, I would just use a regular plastic straw. Once you're done with that, you can pop it off the, off the straw or whatever it is that you're using to make a cylinder, file it if it's a little bit uneven, you can file the ends, file the side, any place it needs it, then make a bottom on it, set it down against a nail form backing and fill in one end. And then going back to your straw, this is where it'd be a little trickier if you didn't have a straw. You're going to fill in the inside of the straw with a little ring of clear acrylic. So you're making something slightly smaller. Then to get it out of the straw, you have to kind of corset but once it comes out you can take that little piece that you've now made and you can glue that to the inside of the cylinder that you made for your peanut butter jar this is how you're getting that different width in after the lid has been taken off the peanut butter jar it's a little bit narrower where the threads are that screw the lid down so we're just taking that little inside piece to be making that smaller section of the jar then i'm going to add a little bit more acrylic to the bottom of it and sort of smooth it down just a little bit to give it that sort of tapered shape on the bottom slightly more rounded than just a flat, you know, squared off bottom. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit, the transition between those two pieces we glued together for the top of the jar. And depending on the brand of peanut butter you're using, obviously there are so many out there. I, you know, there's different, slight different shapes to the jars. There's different, um, like the height to width ratio is slightly different. Just really look at the jar that you're planning to use. And if you happen to have a jar of peanut butter laying around, I would set it close to your nail table so you can look at the actual jar instead of just images. Sometimes it's easier that way. Don't actually have it on your nail table, especially if it's a jar of peanut butter that you're still planning to use for consumption because that would not be safe. But just have it close by so that you can see it. After you have that done and it's all sculpted, then you can take your e-file and file anything that needs to be filed again, if there is anything. If it looks absolutely perfect and you're happy with it as it was, then skip this step. Otherwise, any little bit of filing that you need to do is easy enough to accomplish at this point. If you have an e-file and you're going to be doing this filing with your e-file, a small and in, in width barrel bit, or I guess in height, is really good for this type of thing, which is what I was using. So now that we have that done, I'm going to be sculpting some other little pieces on, nail form, on my nail form backing to go with my jar of peanut butter. The first thing I'm going to do is with a red acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting the lid of the jar. Depending on the brand of peanut butter you are wanting to represent, it may have a different color lid. So just like I said before, with the shape of the jar and making sure you're looking at it to get it right, same thing with this lid. You will wanna look at it to make sure that you get what exactly you're going for. I'm also going to be sculpting a slice of bread. So I'm going to take with an off-white color, I'm going to just sculpt your basic sandwich bread type of a shape kind of squared on the bottom and then slightly round dome on top with little indents on the sides after that first little peanut butter or first bread shape has been sculpted 
take some brown acrylic and you're going to add a little wash of acrylic right around the outside for the crust of the bread. After that all has been done, you have your little slice of bread. You can add anything else you want to do. The last thing I'm going to be making for this type of a, you know, acrylic sculpted piece is I'm going to be making a butter knife to be applying the peanut butter onto your slice of bread or toast. So after you've got that little knife sculpted with the silver acrylic, then you can start doing the fun part, which is assembling this design. It's almost like playing dollhouse. You can put everything together. You can decide how they're going to go. You can just look at all these little pieces and really put them exactly where you want them. I would start with the biggest piece, which is going to be the jar of peanut butter. And I'm going to put that in the upper corner, either side. It doesn't matter. Just kind of figure out where you want that to be. Then I'm going to grab the lid and the, and the slice of bread and the knife, and I'm just going to sort of hold them up to it, up to the nail and decide where I feel like they should go. You can do all of this ahead of time. You can even set them down on your table and kind of arrange them, play with them, figure out what, what things should go where, have some fun with it. I'm going to then put down that lid and the last thing is going to be the butter knife. The butter knife is going to go crisscross across the tip of the nail and it's going to extend way past the sides. Because of that, you may want to put some clear acrylic on the backside of the peanut butter knife so that it doesn't accidentally break on you. Now, to make our peanut butter, I'm going to be mi mixing some clear poly gel or acro gel and then peanut butter brown gel polish. And I can put that color name from Madame Glam in the description box below if you wanna know exactly which color I used. And you're just gonna mix these together until you have a fairly soft, as you add, the more gel polish you add, the softer the mix is gonna be. So a fairly soft, very pigmented mix for your peanut butter. Then you're going to grab a scoop of it and you're going to apply it to your bread. After you apply it, it might look very smooth. You don't want the peanut butter to be too smooth. You want it to have a little bit of a swirl going in it. So then you're gonna take the tip of your little gel sculpting brush and you're gonna kind of muss that gel around a little bit, flash cure it so it doesn't self-level at all. And then you're going to apply a little bit of your peanut butter onto the end of the knife, kind of let it drip down, look a little bit messy. I don't know about anybody else, whenever I do anything with peanut butter, I'll always get some on my countertop every single time it's inevitable um, and then we're going to take and with a long narrow spatula type tool we're going to spread it on the inside of the jar you do not need to fill up the jar that would be very difficult to fully cure and a waste of product so you just really have to fill in the very inside of the jar like spread it out with that little spatula tool after you have a nice layer around the inside you're going to flash cure it flash cure it down the center down the top through the hole and then around the sides fully cure it and then come back and you're going to want to try to block the top of it hopefully your acro gel is still firm enough that it won't just sink in and you can actually fill in the very top of the jar you can try to push it in with your brush a little bit you don't, so you have a hole in the center of your jar, a little secret hole that if marketing was to actually do with a jar of peanut butter, I'd be very upset with. But for this circumstance, we want there to be a hole in the middle. Now I'm going to take some slices of a female cane that are bananas. So these look like little banana slices. If you don't have female canes, you can very well skip this particular step. But peanut butter and banana is one of those combinations that is just so iconic and classic that I decided it would be the perfect little thing to jazz up this plain slice of toast. So we're going to just apply some gel top coat over the top of all of our peanut butter and then before that gets cured you're going to set down your slices of banana these look a little large compared to the size of the bread but a fimo cane is exactly what size it is and there was no changing it and it works out just fine maybe it's just a really big banana like the ones that they have at sam's club so after we have our banana slices on and they've been cured then you can go through and you can add the label to your jar of peanut butter as you're making your label if you're going to be doing the jiff peanut butter then you're going to want to do the three different colored stripes across the front of the label red green and blue I would do the red first, leave a gap, then do the green, and then go back through and add the blue in the middle. That's just my personal preference so that I'm not doing anything where the paint is still gonna be wet. I'm allowing the red and green to dry for just a moment before I put the blue in the middle. But however you wanna do it is just fine. Be very careful as you're painting on this label so that your lines on the top and the bottom look really, really straight even between the color transitions. If you wanted to do like an outline, a black rectangular outline first and then just fill it in, that might be easier if you aren't quite as good at just eyeballing those straight lines after you have all of that first little layer of all of those colors down you may require a second coat depending on how pigmented your acrylic paints are but once they're all done and dried then you can go through and you can do your your actual logo if you want to go through and be as fancy or extra fancy and you want to write crunchy or creamy or all natural or whatever kind of peanut butter it is that you personally prefer you certainly can i'm going to take the easy road and i'm just going to write jiff because as much as it is fun to write all of those teeny tiny things, sometimes I almost think the simplicity is better and it gets the point across a little better. So if you wanna go crazy and do the little writing, which normally I would, don't get me wrong, 
you certainly can. I would even recommend it. However, there really is no shame in trying to just keep it a little more simple. In the case of a design like this, really the only thing anybody needs to know to know what kind of peanut butter this is, is the big GIF, especially against that red, blue, green striped background of the label. You look at that and if you're somebody that's in an area where this type of peanut butter is sold, you're going to look at that and be like, I know exactly what that is. No other, no other wordage required. So if that is the case, um, whatever your favorite brand, I know I personally, I think I like the, uh, Peter Pan brand of peanut butter the best. And so I almost did that one, but I thought this one was just a little bit more iconic of a, of a brand. So we're going to go with the GIF. So we've got the eye in the middle, in the middle of the blue section of the logo. And then from the eye, you can go to the left or right and you can do the J or the F, whichever one you want to do, but we're going to do the rest of the lettering, just going across there. These letters are very bold, bright white, very striking on the lid with a brighter shade of red paint. You can write the GIF again. It'd be basically the exact same thing as far as styling of writing goes, but that one is red on red. If you don't want to do that particular step, you could just leave the top of the jar plain red, but I feel like if you add the logo to it, it really sells the fact that it's the lid to the peanut butter jar. Otherwise it just looks kind of like a red disc that has no specific purpose. Now we're going to apply some gel sealer or gel top coat over the top of the outside of the peanut butter jar. That'll really up the clarity so that you can definitely see into the jar. And if there's any little holes you might've missed when you're applying your peanut butter, you'll see them now too, which is okay. Sometimes there's a little scraping on the side of the jar. If you're scooping it out, I don't see that as any issue. Add some uh, 3d glaze on top of the lid, lid of the peanut butter jar and that's it i hope you guys like this design as much as i do i personally love peanut butter toast and i could eat that probably close to every single day especially if you throw a little bit of cinnamon on top of it it is the best so i hope you guys love this one and i will see you all next time bye